Virginia's Hyatt Regency Hotel in Crystal City was the scene for the 47th annual Nebula Awards weekend. Organized by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, the Nebulas are awarded annually to the best science fiction and fantasy works published in the United States for the previous year. The Nebula is among the most prestigious awards for science fiction and fantasy literature. I've been doing this, this is the fifth time I've put on the Nebula Awards, dating back to 2005, and then I've done them for the last three years. Um, it's, it can be very hectic, but part of the reason I enjoy doing it is a lot of these authors are authors who I you know, have been reading for years, and over the years I've gotten to know them and they've become friends, but they've given me a lot of enjoyment and a lot of pleasure in their books. Um, and by helping to put this uh, event together, I'm giving something back to them. I'm giving them an evening that I hope they can remember. It'll be more memorable for the award winners, of course, than for some of the other people. Uh, but it's a way to give back something, and it's a lot of fun. We're here at the Nebula Awards, talking to Joe Walton, who has just won the Nebula for Best Novel. Congratulations. It's very exciting. It's a, it's a major award. It's remarkably pretty. It's lovely to be appreciated. It's great that all these people liked it enough that they, they voted for it. and. Uh, and gave the award to me. I wasn't really expecting that. Great Bradbury Award for outstanding that presentation goes to Dr. Who, Dr. White. <laughs> We're here at the Nebula Awards talking to Neil Gaiman. Thanks very much for being with us this evening. Oh, thank you. This yeah. is so much fun. Yeah. I was just saying off camera what a big fan I am of your comics work. Oh, thank you. I, I love that we live in a world now in which I'm allowed to go and do comics, and then I'm allowed to do prose, and then nobody minds if I go and, and make a drama on TV. So um, it, it's fantastic. Well, I tell you what, I'm, I'm also a huge Doctor Who fan ever since the Tom Baker days. The resurgence of Doctor Who has just been incredible, you know, with the modern effects and, you know, of course, the stories are always at the top of the game. So. I, I, I think, I mean, you have a, a couple of things going on. Partly, you have the wonderful way that America has embraced Doctor Who. It, you know, uh, Russell Davis brought it back in the UK and England took it straight to its heart, Britain did. Um, and now under Stephen Moffat with Matt Smith, it's, it's lovely seeing America just going, yes, we, we love this thing too. Um, but I, I think the best thing about Doctor Who is just looking back at those geniuses, Verity Lambert, Sidney Newman, the guys who were making the old Doctor Whos who actually figured out a formula for a show that could go on forever and be as fresh and as new and as absolutely scary for kids and as involving for adults as anything, um, you know, 50 years that hasn't aged. I can absolutely attest to that scary for kids because my 12-year-old daughter is terrified of Doctor Who. She loves it, yep. you know, so she's sort of watching, you know, with one hand over her face. That's the best way to watch it. You know, the, the, the Weeping Angels should only be watched from behind the sofa. Even if you're an adult, you should just set up a little encampment behind the sofa. All right. What's next for you? Um, I'm working on an HBO pilot of my novel, American Gods. I'm working on a new novel. Uh, there's a couple of children's books that are going to be coming out next year. Well, thank you so much for everything that you have contributed. Like I said, I mean, I have never seen anything that you have written that I haven't absolutely loved. You know, and the way that you handle every character that you deal with, you know, with such depth, you know, such truth. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a true honor to meet you, and, you, you know, that so is a very well-deserved award, sir. Well, you are much too kind, and on a, normally I wouldn't let it go to my head, but today I'm just over the moon. It's the, one of the two premier awards of the science fiction field. Uh, it's given out, the way the, these are given out is they're voted on by other science fiction writers who are recognizing their peers. Um, and then by getting the word out about the nebulas, uh, people know that they exist. And they say, okay, well, that book was nominated for the award. I'm going to look at it. That book won the award. I'm definitely going to look at it. Um, and so it gets it out. And it's not just the books, because the awards are also given out in the short fiction categories, novels or novelettes, short stories, and novellas. If you go to the bookstores, you'll see the science fiction and fantasy sections are larger now than they've been ever before. There's a lot more coming out, and a lot of it's original. You know, you have some of the media tie-ins, and then you have the uh, things that people are doing. And 
one of the things that I find fascinating is that lately there is a blurring of lines. You have a lot of science fiction and fantasy writers who are making use of non-science fiction and fantasy literary styles. Um, and you have non people who you don't think of as science fiction authors using the tropes of science fiction because they have become mainstream. Inside the community you have people who are writing stories that can almost be termed fan, uh, magical realism, uh, where the elements of fantasy are so downplayed that they, they're woven in very smoothly with uh, modern day literature. And I find myself talking to people who would never read science fiction and fantasy, but then I see the books that they're reading. And what are they reading? They're reading urban fantasy, the vampires in, in the you know urban setting. Um, you know they're reading uh, things like Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. That is, I don't know how you can read that and say that you don't read fantasy. Um, and people just the lines are blurring to the extent that people are reading it without even realizing it.